Today, I want to talk about the real cost of context switching in your organization and then some practical ways to avoid it. Hi, I'm Susanna Parnon Mitchell, Vice President of Operations at Ascendal. Context switching, even when planned, can have a huge drain on productivity. There have been studies out for about 30 years that say if a developer is working on two areas of focus at the same time, they'll lose about 20% of their productivity just switching from one task to the other. So to put this in numbers, imagine you're paying a developer $150,000 a year. Just by assigning that developer to two tasks, you're going to get about 40% productivity on one task and 40% productivity on another task, which means you're going to throw away 20% productivity or $30,000 a year just by not putting that person into a state of focus. There is some other research that's data driven that says that this impact might not be quite as high as 20%. That predominant thinking is more that a developer working across two to three different tasks might only lose about 17% productivity, but that's still a big impact on your wallet. So the number one question to start thinking about right now is how much context switching are my team members having to do? This might not be really obvious in your data, might be things that are creeping in to the work that they have planned, like escalations or quick asks from somebody outside the team. Getting to this data, though, is really critical. So if you can't just ask your system data to show you where the context switching is happening, then ask your people. So how do you address this? Well, at the core, design your teams around the work that you need to accomplish. So first, probably the simplest answer is to create separate teams around the independent initiatives. For example, in an organization where you might be maintaining a legacy product and advancing your roadmap to build new, put certain teams on the legacy and certain teams on the new initiative work. Another approach, probably better suited for organizations that don't have a ton of teams, is to time box the work. So time box that legacy maintenance to certain times and dates and allow for periods of focus to reduce the back and forth context switching. But simply dividing your teams amongst the initiatives may not work. There's a risk here that's a little bit more subtle. Your teams are not going to be as excited and frankly not as happy working on legacy work as they would on the new and exciting work. So there's a team member satisfaction component that really can't be ignored. So there is a middle ground approach that I've seen work that combats this issue of needing to split focus, but also not burning out one team working on something that doesn't bring satisfaction. That approach is to simply rotate the less desirable work. So what does this look like? Well, it could look like taking that legacy maintenance work and rotating the team or teams that work on it on a quarterly basis. It keeps it fresh and also means nobody's stuck on it long term. So what are the key takeaways here? First and foremost, context switching has a real cost on your organization. Apply that across multiple people and it's compounding. It can have a huge impact on your bottom line and represent a huge opportunity cost in the work that you can't get done. Second, it's imperative to actually know what your team members are working on and what that amount of context switching really is that's taxing your organization. And third, you need to organize your teams around the work you need to get done. If you do these things, you'll reduce the overall amount of context switching and really boost your productivity.